Check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene. This is the D. Three. Hello and welcome to the podcast for and about Detroit artists and entertainers. If there are any left, I'm Seth they're Ressler. They're here, they're here. <laughs> Becky Scarcello is here uh, with you. It is Wednesday, March 25th. Yes. Uh, we don't know what what day it is when you're listening to this, but uh, that's, that's where, where we're, we're at right out. now. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. We, and we are very far apart, you and I. Yes, we're six feet apart. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and actually, technically, I think we have to say this so that we don't get arrested. We are recording this before the official lockdown of Michigan starts. Yes. Sort of our last uh, hurrah in the studio yeah, for a bit. Getting these episodes in under the wire. Uh, mm-hmm. And on today's show, we are going to talk to Gary Graff, music journalist. Have him on the show a ton of times before. Yes. This guy has been doing this forever. He puts together the Detroit Music Awards, which he co-founded. Uh, and so we're going to talk to him a little bit about the effect that this is having on the music scene. I know it's definitely having an effect on our lives. We're going out a lot less. Oh my goodness. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to miss seeing Gary because I see him at, at shows. All you know, the that's time. normally where I run into him. Well, yeah. You know, I've been thinking about this because this is something that is obviously, obviously it's impacting everybody, but I think it is really hitting hard everybody that we have had on this show. Absolutely. Because we're, uh, we're yes. in something like 230 episodes. Uh, we've probably God, had guess. over three, maybe even 400 guests on this show, all in the arts and entertainment scene, all making a living for the most part from people coming out to their events, whether that's their exhibits at a museum, whether it's their concerts, whether it's their stand-up comedy performances. Exactly. And they're all getting killed. I know. You I know? know. Just the gig economy. You yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and it's, it's falling not, apart. And normally, when you do something like that, you know, okay, I'll go drive Uber for a little while, or I'll go pick up this job or that job. Yeah, but DoorDash, or, right? Yeah. But it's it's that's not existing. You know, and I'm and I'm thinking about the impact this is having on people. I think about Josh Adams, who we the stand up comedian oh that we goodness. just had a mm-hmm. little while ago, who just went out to Los Angeles, right? Like I don't know, maybe a month ago. And is in a brand new city, and that is hard Lockdown. enough when you've never done this before, and and to be going through it. I know this kind of thing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just the isolation. I really, obviously, worry about people's livelihoods and and that, but I really, really worry about people's mental health. I do too. Like this is big time effect on on yeah. all of our mental states. Well, I, you know, I'm obviously working from home now. I don't do well. I've never liked working from home in the past when I've done it, because what happens is you have to set up a routine and I'm not good at it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is I wake up, I check my email and then I get out of bed and I don't wind up having breakfast or getting out of my pajamas to like 11. And then I can't put it away at the end of the day. Like I'm, I'm not good about that. And I need to sort of you know, I was reading about uh, Mark Kelly, the astronaut, you know, yes. who spent a year up in space and he offered some tips. And one of the big ones was you've got to establish a routine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I think that's so, that's so tough. Right no, now. I, I agree. And, it, you know, I've worked at home in my jobs for a number of years now, but I always had outside meetings or, you know, obviously going out a lot. Mm-hmm. So even though I work from home, there was still some, something every day that I'd have to go out and go to or wanted to go out and go to. Well, and you do things to, because you're alone, you know, my, my, my girlfriend lives with me, but she is in healthcare. And so she is still working uh, and still leaves the house to go to her job because she's got one of those essential jobs. And so I'm there home alone all day. And so but it's funny, isn't it? It's like being inside your own head can it, often be a dangerous well, especially place. Especially with like cable news and everything being what it is and just sort of this nonstop barrage of just mm-hmm. bad news. Like I, I have to limit my intake. Yeah. You know, but I'm definitely seeing it uh, small ways. You know, the other day I, I made my coffee and I, you know, I use a French press and you kind of have it in the French press for four minutes before you pour it into a cup. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I just. I didn't. I, I poured oh. my cream and I just poured it in immediately. And it's one of those, like, what did I just do? And so yeah. then I took everything with the cream and put it back into the French press <laughs> to let it steep for the actual four minutes. And it's one of those things that's like really, really dumb, but you're just like. Yeah, you're just out, I, of, your, I, out, just, of, your, out of yourself. Yeah, it's just, it's different. It's yeah. different. And I have, um, you know, my teenagers home mm-hmm. and they're just, they both drive. They both have cars. It's, you know, they're just used to going and being with their friends and 
hanging out and it's, um, we're all trying to figure out, you know, we're, ha- we're enjoying the time as a family. That part is really good, but there's only so much of that you can take. Yeah. And then you start to get on each other's nerves and you miss the different interaction and what do you keep talking about? And, and, you know, you can't get so mired in the negativity and the news. And like you said, you know, I think my boys, I was, you know, a pretty early proponent of, uh, staying at home. Mm -hmm. And I think they were like, Oh, okay. Like, why are you being so strict kind of thing? And then it became like, don't quote me another article, mom. Like it is stop, <laughs> stop. And my husband too is just like, stop reading me that, you know, stop talking about it. Well, the analogies changed quickly. I, I mean, and we know this because I, I felt really awkward last week because, you know, we record a lot of these episodes in advance. You know, we, we were feeling really good about this podcast. Oh yeah, we're like, we got this. We took a couple months off to sort of reformulate the show, reformulate the format. We built a studio that looks gorgeous. We were about to start Uh, streaming video. Uh, You know, we we had all these plans. We were working on live events where we could do this in front of an audience on a regular basis. And all that's been, been... Put on hold. Now they were now. saying, "Poor me." Like there's no, bigger I mean, problems. Look, everybody's but, got this yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, but, yeah, but, but just we're, relating. We're as disrupted by it uh, sure. as anybody because we we just felt like we were sort of in a groove. And yes. You know, now we're sitting there looking at it, going, "You know, we're here to talk about things when people go out, and nobody's." It feels really tone deaf, and obviously, there's we can't direct people to go do things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so last week we had recorded all those interviews with, with Ping Ho, who was great. Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, and fantastic. And, you know, we sat there afterwards going, uh, what do we do with this? What do we, and even then when she came in, you know, we had to bump elbows. Remember that? It was She's, starting. Yeah. It was starting, but, yeah. but then all of a sudden it just, the analogies day by day, it was like, okay, this is like the crash of 2008 or this mm-hmm. is like the crash of 1987. And then all oh, of a sudden it's the thing. great depression. Yeah, it's World, World War II. Two, and yeah. you're like, oh, <laughs> No, but so. but literally, like closures to this extent have not happened since World War II. No. I mean that's it's reality. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I just I guess I'm feeling for everybody. I'm I'm worried about everyone. I'm concerned for everyone, and um, I don't know. I just want to keep connecting. All right. Well, let's connect with Gary, shall we? All right, Becky, you know how we do this. Uh, From time to time, we have somebody call into the show who knows more than we know about a particular topic. And today we have joining us one of our regulars, one of our favorites, Gary Graff. He's a music journalist for the Oakland Press. He's also the co-founder and co-producer of the Detroit Music Awards. So we're going to talk about what's happening to that this year, because obviously everything's in flux right now. And he also writes for Billboard magazine. Uh, In fact, he just had an article in there titled How Detroit Music is coping with coronavirus. So let's find out. Welcome back to the show, Gary. Hey, guys. Hey, Gary. Welcome welcome from my corner of the quarantine. Yes, yes. yes. We're virtually giving you a hug, a high five, a wave. Yeah. Are you you sheltered in place? I, for the most part, you know, I'm surrounded by all that is part of my professional life, the books and the the, the vinyl and the CDs and all the other stuff, the dog sleeping behind me. You know. mm-hmm. That's got to be different for you because you're the kind of guy who is out at a show, what, like four, five, six four, nights four, a week? Four, five nights a week, yeah. Exactly. So I'm, yeah. I'm blessed in that, you know, my my life has changed, my livelihood has not. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's plenty to write about, you know, just, just keeping up with concert cancellations and postponements and rescheduling is a full-time job at this point. So. Sure. And it, changes, and it changes almost by the minute. What is the general outlook or the general sense of what's going general, on out there? General feeling is confusion, fear. Um, you know, you can't, I, I don't want to paint too dark a picture on it, but yeah, people are, no, but uncertainty, I think, is the, is the biggest word for it. Just nobody, nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows when we're going to be back up and running in a real sense. Uh, people are, a lot of shows are being rescheduled for 2021 at this point, um, you know, which is when I think people feel it's going to be safer to go out. There are a lot of things, particularly the festivals, that are postponing into the fall and hoping that everything's back on track by then. 
but we don't know. And right. that's the that's the scary part about it. That is one of the things that I, I've seen happen is that everybody's time frame has sort of expanded. That at first we went, oh, it's going to be three weeks. And then yeah. we went, oh, it's going to be three months. Yeah, three months. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, and, and are you seeing that with the concerts as well? Absolutely. You know, I think I think it was hopeful, but I will tell you that one thing that happened in the concert world is the two major promotion firms, Live Nation and AEG, as well as some of the larger booking agencies like Paradigm, actually formed a task force early on, like earlier than the U.S. government seemed to get yes. serious about it, because they have worldwide interests. You know, they're in China and Korea and Europe and all over, and they saw a need early on to say, listen, we need to put our heads together and watch this situation and come up with some protocols and some ideas. So those were the people who I think had the vision that, listen, this is not going to be two weeks and we're out of it, three weeks and we're out of it, a month, two months. They un- they understand that there's a real impact going on here, and they understand the uncertainty too. They're monitor they're monitoring the health concerns as much as they are the box offices. So the you know I dare say the music industry, the entertainment industry was a little bit ahead of the curve, at least in terms of U.S. standards. Well, you know, one of the bellwethers for me was when South by Southwest was canceled. Right. That was one of the first moments Early when you things. went, oh. This is serious. Yeah, you had, you had Ultra Music Fest and then South by Southwest kind of in a row there. And then, and then it was right after that, you know, South by Southwest canceled on a Friday and they were postponed, whatever they're doing, on yes. a Friday. And it was the following week, Wednesday and Thursday, where all hell broke loose. Correct. And yeah. every, everything started going down. I and have, now, now we're pretty much, I mean, I think we're done with April. You know, I don't think anything's going to happen no. in April at this point. And I think May is wishful thinking and June may be as well. Are these organizations that put these events on in a financial position where if they miss a year, it's not going to kill them? It's not going to kill them. It'll be a bi- it'll be a big hurt. I mean, they're they're taking a bath in the stock market, certainly, and you know they're lo- you know they they're out a lot of money. They're and they they will continue to hemorrhage some some money because not only do they have to handle what's not happening, they still have to look ahead and say, okay, what is happening? You know, this this band wants to go on tour in late 2020 or 2021. We got to fork out the money to lock them in. So they, they've kind of they've kind of got it going on all fronts, and they have they have to maintain their normal business as well as be in the emergency procedures realm yeah. that they, that they're in with so many of their festivals and concerts. So so it's a, it's a tough position to be in. They're they're juggling a lot, Definitely. but so are, the, so are the local people. You know, even the even the the small clubs of the area are juggling a lot too. They don't they're not sure when they'll they'll be A be allowed to be open and B when they'll be able to be open again. Yeah. And if somebody comes to you, you know, wanting to, you know, starting to route their fall twenty twenty tour, what do you say, especially when you're not making any money right now from mm-hmm. your venue? Exactly. You know, can, yeah. you, can you can you commit a book? Yeah. And so the trickle down is it's not even a trickle down, it's like a fan out. Because it hits it hits every single sector from the bartender and the guy at the door to the to the road crews of the bands and the musicians themselves. Well, I think there's also this sentiment, you know, of club owners and stuff like, how do I help take care of my employees? How do I take care of the musicians? Like, what do I offer them? You know, some local places still putting on just shows in an, in an empty venue and then putting it online and, you know, the musicians live streaming on Instagram and all the, you know, everybody, I mean, it's, it's the nice part of it that everybody's trying to take care of not only themselves, but everybody else too, because it's such this community, the music community. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, people, everybody's intentions are good, but yeah. their resources are only going to go so far. And now, with the uh, you know with the stay in place order that we have from the governor, something like you know the live stream songwriters in the round show uh, that was out at Twenty Front Street last Thursday, that's illegal now. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know you can't. You're not going to be able to do that now, or you know you'll wind up in the Who's Gal or something. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's really you know what can these artists do from home. To, right. to maybe generate some income. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's a mess. And mm-hmm. that's that's an understatement. 
you know, I keep racking my brain and you try to compare this to other things. You try to compare it to the recession back in 2008 or to 9-11. Uh, and the, the thing that strikes me that's the difference between this and 9-11 is that 9-11 you didn't see coming and the event itself was really only half a day. And then right. we were in the aftermath of it. And it was right. about how to pick up the pieces afterwards. Right. We're not in and the aftermath. And it didn't cripple us. That didn't cripple us. Right. And no, 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 no. Bob no, life. Yeah. No. Right. And, you know, whereas this has. Yeah. And, and we're not in the aftermath. We're kind of look, standing on the beach oh, we're, and looking we're at this at tidal be- wave coming. Mm-hmm. We're not even at the beginning. Yeah. And right. sometimes it doesn't feel like that. You know, we have a long we have a long way to go before we have any sense that it's under control and we know what we're doing with it or we know what to do with it. And then how to rebuild and restart from there. Yeah. yeah. What do you think this does to creativity and on the artist level? I think it if it's done right, you know, if the artist approaches it in the right frame of mind, which is going to be hard mm-hmm. for them, you know, because of all the life circumstances, but they've got time on their hands now. They can create. They can, you know, in music, they can write songs. Script writers can write scripts. Playwrights can write, you know, can write plays. People can come up with something. And it also tests their creativity for how to remain in front of an audience when you're, when you're under enforced house arrest like this. Yeah, exactly. You know, what can you, what can you do to engage uh, the communities? And we're seeing, you know, we're seeing a lot of it. Uh, you know, in Detroit, they've got this uh, lullabies for Detroit that uh, Audra Kubat and Emily Rose are doing. Um, I haven't named everybody in that because I don't remember who's all involved, but it's a lot of people. Yeah, it's a big uh, list. You're going to you're gonna have other musicians who will do like a daily song or a weekly, you know, concert or something. Third Man Records is doing doing a series out of Nashville, you know, on a larger scale. You've got the Grammy Museum and Rolling Stone Magazine doing different kind of series, and they're just going to pop up. So if you're sitting there on your phone and computer and don't feel like binge watching something, you can start to hop around on the internet and find people making music. So it's, it will be a, it will be a good cool. job yeah. for art. You know, I was out at CES, uh, I've been there the last couple of years, and one of the things that they it was a big deal there was virtual reality, you know, and wearing the the goggles and seeing that. And I just remember thinking there is a cool opportunity here for bands or for musicians, because imagine if you could create something where it felt like you were, I don't know, sitting next to Chris there. Martin, you know, of it, it does. I've, I've been doing that. I've been doing this a lot where I'm making dinner and a friend of mine is DJing and I yeah. put it on and I, it's, it's nice. I feel like I'm with that person and you know, some of my favorite artists I've put on and like their face is right there. Yeah. You know, yeah. it really does make you feel connected and I'm really thankful for technology like that right now. But so, more importantly, how does dinner turn out if you're sitting yeah, on your goggles? Say, it turns out fantastic because, you know, I'm dancing around, shaking the spices. She knows where all the microwave buttons are. <laughs> hey, I'm a pretty good cook, and now I get to finally do it some more. So, Gary, let's walk through some of the big events, starting with the Detroit Music Awards, because this is an event that happens usually in April. What are you guys doing with it this year? Well, we, we, had a, we did announce on Monday that we are... We're going virtual with it. We are. Uh, we we called off the live show on April nineteenth at, at the Fillmore Detroit for obvious reasons, yeah. and we are going to create an online event. Uh, we'll have more details about that in the future, but it'll combine performances with award presentations. We're seeing if we can't create some sort of mechanism so that people can make acceptance speeches when they give their awards. And you know, we're actually getting excited about it as much as. It's a shame we have to do it this way. We're feeling like it's going to be a really tight, good show with some with some good music, and it'll still have the the feel of an award show. We've got some nice people who are lining up to be our presenters, and you know, again, virtual presenters. You know, no, there will be no audience, no venue, no nothing. But we'll, much like the music awards themselves, we'll we'll hop between presentations and performances. That's and actually able, really cool. Talk about creative challenge. Like that's and, you something know, we, to, you know, ex, expose yourself to new realms and learn a lot. And yeah, yeah so we're, we're gathering the, the assets as we say in the business now and, and we'll put them together. And like I say, hopefully, uh, hopefully make it into something that's a really nice experience for people and still be able to honor our mission of, of shining a spotlight and honoring Detroit's music scene. 
Oh, we'll you know, definitely we didn't, we didn't want to just you know, yeah, we didn't want to just say okay, we're not going to do it in 2020. We'll see in 2021. We've we've had the voting going on, you know, since the beginning of the year and the different phases. So we we don't want to waste all those work and all those votes, and we don't want to have a void in the continuum. So so we'll uh, this will let us uh, you know maintain it. You know, I do think that there are going to be some changes that we make to adapt to th- what's going on right now that ultimately wind up being permanent changes because we sit there and go, oh, that was a good idea. Let's do that mm-hmm. piece of it again next year. And I'm well, curious yeah. to see if you sure. wind up finding something like that. That whole necessity, yeah. you know, thing oh, yeah. breed, breeds That's great that. ideas. So. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, okay. And let's talk about some of the other big events. Uh, what's going on with movement now? Uh, well, movement, movement has moved into September. And uh, they're, they haven't said yet whether their entire lineup will be intact, but they're, you know, they're hoping to, and I know they're working on that now. Uh, they like the music awards. They held off for as long as they could until the inevitable was in front of you and the realization that this, mm-hmm. you know, it, it was not going to be the right time to have a festival. So once again, you have your choice of, you know, and Bonnaroo faced it, Coachella, mm-hmm. uh, some others, Glastonbury in England decided just to cancel outright, see in 2021, uh, movement and all the others I just mentioned, as, as well as others, um, you know, are moving into the fall, fall so the, the last third, or the late summer and fall, so the last third and, you know, fourth quarter of the year is going to, is just going to be packed with stuff, assuming we're back up and running, or yeah. assuming there hasn't been a recurrence of the virus once we all go back out in the world, which is what a lot of experts will tell you is likely to happen. And I just wonder how long it will take even when, okay, some directive or whatever, I don't know if that's going to happen. Oh, okay. It's okay now. You know, how long it will take for people to get over the fear of traveling. And so, you know, some, something like movement, people come from all over the world. And will they have the money? Exactly. That's the other piece. The whole whole means to do anything. And it's like, if, if, if life is getting back to normal, people are going to have to go back to work and right. rebuild. And, well, this has right. got to be one of the first things you cut from your budget. Is, of course. You know, the entertainment, sure. Yeah. And that's yeah. why, you know, the things we spoke about, these new ways of presenting live entertainment, you know, may become more, more of the norm because, you know, it'll be more cost effective, you know, probably less expensive and a way for people to have a live entertainment experience without breaking the bank. But I tell you, though, I really, really worry about that loss of human connection. That's just not the same. I mean, I, I talk about I've been watching it on my phone and computer, and, and a lot of it's kind of cool, and, and, and it feels a little intimate, but that's not the same as dancing not, with somebody at a show. Not at all. Not at all the same. Yeah. You know, so that'll keep bringing people to these events, but you know, coming to them, especially this year when we're just getting out of it and people are just getting back on their feet. You know, a lot. They're going to have to make a lot of hard choices, and, right? You know, and you know what their what their money will allow them to do. Yeah. Uh, what about Mopop? Do we know anything about them yet? They are, you know, they are scheduled for the. I believe it's the third weekend in July at a new new location. Mm-hmm. You know, historic Fort Wayne, which I think is a great location. I mean, it's a wonderful place to do an event like this, and they're kind of holding their breath and hoping that they're able to pull it off. Mm-hmm. But they've announced they're on sale. And just, uh, you know, waiting and hoping it'll happen. Uh, and then do we know about the, the, the two events that happened Labor Day weekend, the Arts, Beats, and Eats uh, and the Jazz Festival? Haven't heard anything about Arts, Beats, and Eats. Uh, jazz Festival was full steam ahead. Last week they announced D.D. Bridgewater, as who was raised in Flint, as their artist in residence. On Monday they announced their lineup, or at least the 28 headlining acts that are in their lineup and you know we've got uh, Herbie Hancock, Robert Glasper's going to be part of it. Um, you know, just it's a good looking lineup. They've got some really interesting things in it. Uh, 100th anniversary tributes to Dave Brubeck and Charlie Parker. Pharaoh Saunders is coming. Uh, this thing they call the Summit, which is the Manhattan Transfer meets Take 6 in kind of a vocal summit. So they they've got a nice looking lineup 4 days Labor Day weekend and Again, they're 
biding their time, holding their breath, and and hoping that it, it, they'll be able to do it. You know, when I was running radio stations, we had to put on these concerts every summer, and it was my least favorite thing to do. It, it, because events events are a lot of work. It's tons of work, yeah. They are an enormous amount of work. And these were much smaller events than what we're talking about with these concert festivals. Right. And I just remember praying that it didn't rain <laughs> because you're right. worried about the walk-up attendance. I can't even imagine what these organizers are oh, going through. I know, as they're thinking about it's heartbreaking. this. Heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah. No, you make you make a you make a decision whether you're going to bail or continue. Right. And as we talk about Mopop and the Jazz Fest, and I presume, uh, you know, Arts Beats and Eats, they're making the decision to continue for now. Yeah, right, and right. They'll, they'll make the they'll make the hard decision down the road, and you've seen that had to happen with you know the Cinetopia Film Festival or some of these other other events. I'm sure Motor City Comic Con right now is wringing its hands and trying to decide if it can right. go on or not. Yeah. And it's just you know it's a, it's a tough decision to make. Like we went through it with the Music Awards, we held on as as long as we could. We were outside the original mandated bubble for where they had the cap for mass gatherings, but you reach a point where you realize it's it's not going to get better. Right. Right. And so it's time to, you know, it's time to make that tough decision and, and move on and figure out what you're going to do as an alternative. You know, the joke's been going around that uh, in nine months from now, there's going to be a lot of babies because everybody's oh. quarantined. They've got nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if there's going to be a ton of albums. Like, like artists are just going to put out two, three, four albums because they've got wondering nothing that to too. do but write right yeah. now. Yeah, and they have yeah. the vehicle to do that now with the internet. Exactly. I do know... I mean, the one mistake I think some artists are making is I'm, I'm seeing a number of albums that were scheduled for this time period are being rescheduled for later in the year. And I really think that's short-sighted. Now is the time. Yes. You have, you have people's, people who have time. Yes. And, and a real appetite to to hear something new, and so why not put it out now? And you know, do your do your internet, you know, concert or pl- song a day or whatever you're going to do, get the word out. You know, mm-hmm. no, maybe they won't buy it. You know, because nobody buys music anymore. Anyways. But they have more time to pay attention to what you're doing than they did before. Right. I will say this. I do remember and. Granted, this was back in the days of CDs, right? When you had to go get a physical album. Uh, But I remember a record label rep saying this to me at one point. He said, when the economy goes south, I would much rather work in the record business than something else because people cut their vacation and then they tell themselves... I should give myself this small treat. Yes. And, and at that yes. time, it was go out and buy an album. And I right. wonder if that, you know, I don't know I if don't that know. still applies in the age of streaming, but... Yeah, I don't know if they'll buy anything, but they'll spend more time with it. Right. Yeah. Engage. You know, I need, yeah. they need their five minutes of zen. Yeah. You know, and right. so let's go, let's go find some music. And the, the, the way things are going now, I think it's more five hours of Zen. Yeah. Right. That, people, that people are looking for. So that's a lot daily of, five that's hours. A lot of music, that's a lot of music to listen to. Well, Gary, thank you so much for taking a few moments. Uh, we're sorry to hear that the uh, the music awards uh, couldn't happen the way yes. you envisioned them. But uh, if people want to follow everything that's going on with them, where do they go? Uh, DetroitMusicAwards.net. Right. And we will have the we will have the updates there. And again, eight p.m. Eastern time on uh, on April nineteenth, there will be an event. There will be a ceremony. It'll just be online. And as I said, more on that more on that in the very near future. And probably even more people will see it now. Hopefully, because it's recorded and they can watch it later too. Yeah, it'll be archived. It'll be yeah. it'll be around. So we'll let people. You know, we'll we'll get. Believe me, we'll get the word out. Oh yes, and we will too. <laughs> I'll knock on your door from six feet away. <laughs> That's right. And tell you what's going on. Leave it on our doorstep and run. Sure. Exactly. All right, Gary. Best of right. luck and please yeah. stay safe. You too. You Take stay care. safe. Stay healthy. Hang in there, and we'll talk again. Okay. Right. Thanks, Take care. Gary. All these music interludes, they seem like such a good idea at the time. No, the uh, drama. (laughs) They're not quite totally appropriate for these days. I don't know what tone to take, man. It's like serious and like, hey, you know, stay home, do the right thing. But then like, okay, we're home. Let me make you laugh. You know, it's like. Oh, yeah, has so much going on in the head. There, there really is, and you know, I 
talking to Gary, it just reminds me of all the relationships that we have developed in the yes. course of doing this podcast, so especially many. with those guys who call in on a regular basis and have been so willing to share their knowledge and share their expertise. And, and frankly, some of them I've been like, you know, I, I've, I've been floored and honored that they've been willing to spend time Absolutely. with us on a regular basis. I mean, and uh, has from WDET has, has called in over and over again. Uh, Bailey from Detroit history tours, who we're going to yes. talk to again tomorrow uh, has, has been what, you know, we had Aaron Foley who was the chief storyteller mm -hmm. uh, for the city of Detroit before he moved to the Bay area. Yeah. Mark Curley and check. Yeah. And they've all just, been so kind of generous. And then we see them out mm -hmm. at things that we all do. And we feel, feel part of this community and that they respect us as a, yeah. you know, a provider of information as well is, is tremendous. Steve Johnson, uh, and of, 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 uh, Motor City Brew Tours yeah, and it's, Nick it's Britsky, incredible. who we've had on a number Nick of times. And, and yeah, I feel like, um, yeah, like you said, very honored that uh, to be in that company and, uh, it's, I, I feel like we're all collectively struggling with how do we fulfill our collective missions? Yeah. Well, you look, I mean, look at what's going on over at the Metro Times. Oh, uh, absolutely. And, and I, I have met Lee DeVito. We Me actually too. had Many him on times, the, yeah. the podcast that I did previous to this. And I just, I feel for what they're going through over there because Absolutely. they had just had to lay off eight people. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's someone we always look to and right. to, know, to figure out what's going on we're covering and, and different yeah. angles on things. And, and, yeah. and so all these websites or these publications that f rely upon revenue coming in from whether it's the restaurants or the concerts or mm -hmm. things happening, it's just the fact that everything has stopped still. Is, right. And, and we just know intimately how, ever, how connected that all is yeah. and it, how, what a domino effect it has. And I know I personally, like, I don't, you know, I want to support people, but I don't want to ask anybody for money, even though I'm in the tour, tourism business. Right. I've had to cancel everything as well. So yeah. I don't have income, but I'm not, I don't want to ask anyone else for money. You know, it's right. just this, where's the money going to come from? Where's the support going to come from? Well, and this is... I mean, this is the weird thing about the economy is that, you know, we all think of money as this thing that you want to get, but really money's got to move. Right. It's a cycle and a, a whole funnel and yeah. And that's what keeps interconnected. everything going. Absolutely. And when the money, it's like blood. And when the money stops flowing through the system, the whole thing dies. Right. And it's a real problem. And, uh, y you know, you're really seeing that and you're really seeing, you know, I've noticed with my groceries, right? Like I get groceries just as I'm going to use them. I had to build up a stock of canned foods and get a freezer and put yeah, stuff in Yeah, I mean, I don't it. use canned foods. Right, yeah. I, I don't either, you yeah. know, but now I have that for emergency because it was always just sort of... Yeah, you, know, you just take so much for granted. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. the way so many of the businesses in the arts and entertainment scene work. Absolutely. And that they just can't go a month or two months or three no, months No, anybody without. that's a bartender, um, you know, you go and it's you get your tips and then that's what you use to live on the next week. Right. You know, it's, it's yeah. so the, the way we've closed this podcast for a long time now, uh, has been with the saying Detroit's moving, keep up. I know. So I don't want to make fun of it, but, uh, but Detroit's not moving. And so don't try to keep up, like stay home and be safe and, uh, to, you know, try to support your artists in any way that you, you know, that works for you. So, all right. So let's, uh, let's at least do this. You've got one that we can support here today. You've got a song by a local, uh, what, what do you got today? Yeah. yeah. So I tried to pick this week and, and I apologize in advance for not being able to share everybody's song just yet, but the ones I picked for this week's shows, um, I thought were particularly relevant. So I hope you'll listen to the lyrics and, and see what I mean. But, uh, this song for today is called burn. It's by Tom Butwin. He's, um, um, a singer, he's an actor, he's a guitarist, a songwriter from Royal Oak. And he wrote this song a number of years ago, he said, just while watching TV, but it's uh, particularly relevant in our times today. So it's called Burn. All right, we'll take a listen. Stay safe out there. Wanna be good, wanna be big and sturdy. If we just could, the fires wouldn't burn. I love the world Might lead to something But then again good Can't 
come from nothing No one ever said it would I'm still standing The world is burning down The TV's calling For us to gather around And see the lives and the means Burning fires in a faraway city well, I hear it's beyond the shadow of a doubt That the people are past Past holding steady I wanna be good I wanna be big and sturdy If we just could The fires wouldn't burn I love the world My need to something But then again good Can't come from nothing no one ever said it would See the smoke trails From where the love was lost Holly was calling Looking for me to go the cost If we can't keep our eyes upon the prize Maybe things, maybe things will get better Just like the wings of a plane carrying on not to complain Drop the bomb spill the letters We wanna be good We wanna be big and sturdy If we just could The fires wouldn't burn But I love the world My lead to something But then again can't come from nothing, and no one ever said it would. I still stand there. The world is burning down. The world is burning down. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene.